Splatoon has a huge variety of weapons, and it can be a bit difficult to figure out how exactly you want to mesh them together. So today I'm going to be using my experience as a competitive player for over five years to help teach you how to build a team comp. And joining me for this video will be Dr. Prodigy. I have been a competitive Splatoon coach since Splatoon 1, and have coached some of the best players and teams in all of North America. I was also a player on Deep Blues for two years during Splatoon 2, during which we had many top four tournament placements and were sponsored a couple of times. Additionally, I've written guides on how to coach Splatoon and was a co-founder for one of the leading NA tournament organizers of a Splatoon event. Finally, before we get started, there are timestamps in the description, so if you need to jump to any specific section, you can take a look down there. With that all being said, let's get started. And one of the first things to understand before looking at the team as a whole is your own weapon and role. So let's start with a simple one, Range Blaster. This weapon has two main strengths, the ability to poke around corners and get kills with its one-shot direct, making this a kill-orientated weapon. However, it has some major downsides. The weapon is very slow and immobile, meaning it relies a lot on map control since it struggles to move on its own, and the weapon doesn't provide a lot of pain, meaning you're having both a lower special output and less turfing power. There could be other factors too, such as range, but the idea is you get a basic gist of the strengths and weaknesses your weapon has, and once you're able to do that, you can also apply that to all of your teammates' weapons. So now we can have a basic idea of what our weapons are good and bad at. So how do we build a comp around that? Well, this brings me to my next big point, weapon synergy. So if Range Blaster is good at killing and weak at painting, what would we want to run alongside that weapon? Probably something that can make up for its weaknesses and help its strengths. A good example would be Neo Splash. This is a fast weapon that can definitely help in fights and has a burst bomb to help with poking damage, but it also has high painting capability and special outputs. So not only is this weapon helping to cover for Range Blaster's weaknesses, but it's enhancing its strengths. In other words, the weapons can cover each other. It's also important not to go too far into one side. For example, we could play a really heavy killing composition, stuff like blasters and sloshers together, but if we don't run anything that can paint or have a higher special output, our comp becomes too one-sided. It's important to have a balance of not only weapons that can help each other out, but also that cover each other's weaknesses. A simpler way people like to categorize weapons to help with this are slayers, supports, and backlines. Slayers are typically weapons that focus on getting kills, supports focus on paint and special output, particularly with specials that help out your team, and backlines are longer range weapons that put pressure from a distance. You don't need one of every single one of these roles in a comp, but it's a good way to generalize do we have too many ranged weapons, too many painters, or too many slayers? There should be a bit of variety. It's also worth noting that some weapons can fall into multiple roles. For example, the Kensa Splattershot has decent paint and slaying capability, and with Suction Bomb and Missiles it has a nice supportive kit, so you can play this either as a slayer or a support. Generally, these more versatile weapons are a lot easier to mesh into different kinds of comps because they're more adaptable. But it's not just the weapons themselves that should have synergy with each other, we also have to think about subs, and most importantly, special weapons. Sub synergy isn't as important, typically things like bombs are a lot easier to work into comps because they're nice for poking in a lot of situations, but there are some things that you might want to keep in mind. For example, if you're playing a blaster or slosher, a kill-orientated high damage weapon, something like burst bomb, which can do a good bit of poking damage to make people one-shot more often, could be really helpful. In general, I'd say bombs are really important for your comp, especially for the shorter range weapons, so you should have a little bit of them. More importantly though, we have specials. And specials are really important because Splatoon 2 has a very high focus on getting value from chaining them together. So there are some obvious examples. If you run something like an Inkjet or Ultra Stamp, you'll want specials like Armor or Tena Missiles. That way people can't focus it super easily. Armor will prevent the Inkjet user from being shot down as much, or protect the Ultra Stamp user, while missiles can be used to displace people so they don't get the chance to shoot at those specials altogether. Really aggressive specials and weapons tend to work very well with global specials like Ink Armor and Missile that can displace the team and prevent them from focusing that special user down. Like with weapons, specials can also compensate for comp's weaknesses. For example, running Tena Missiles, if you don't have a lot of range, can be great for moving longer range weapons, which are typically slower, out of position giving you the opportunity to move forward. Specials should not only have good synergy with each other, but should also help out with your comp for making up for weaknesses or enhancing strengths. So let's look at an example from some top Japanese players playing in a zones-only tournament called Area Cup. 
We'll start with a more untraditional comp, where we have a Grim Range Blaster, Custom Jet Sculpture, Custom Explosher, and L3D. So here we're playing around burst damage. We have, for example, the L3D's Burst Bombs, the Custom Jet Burst Bomb, Grim's Shots and Burst Bombs, and Explosher Shots, all of which combo very well with each other to be able to burst people down quickly. Another good strength of this comp is range. We're running jet and explo, so we have a good amount of long range pressure. We also have a large amount of painting capability, with L3, jet, and explo being great painting weapons, like I mentioned earlier, making up for range blaster's lack of paint. Looking at the specials, we have Tena Missiles, which can make either the Stingray or Inkjet kill a bit easier by showing where people are, or providing small amounts of damage. The specials also work pretty well with the comp, as the inkjet can play off very well from the burst damage of the burst bomb weapons x Washer or Stingray. And of course, the Stingray is a great push starter for something like a Range Blaster or L3 to run in with, as the small amount of damage can allow the L3 to kill in one burst, can allow burst bomb combos to be more reliable, etc. So this comp clearly works pretty well together, but this brings up another point. What's the goal this comp is playing for? To go over that, we need to talk about win conditions. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Prodigy, and I'm going to talk a bit about win conditions and understanding what your goals and objectives are. What do I or others mean when they say win condition? Your win condition is the term used to describe what you and your team must do in order to win a game. Imagine you have two teams that are perfectly equal. They have the same amount of skill, knowledge, and both teams make no mistakes. All that is different is their weapon and special compositions. Due to this, both teams approach each match differently because they need to play it to their strengths with their composition and avoid their weaknesses. For example, if one team is using machine or blasters, they have a good verticality and can pressure around corners and small walls due to the AOE. However, this often comes at the cost of lower mobility and paint output. The second team could be using four shooter type weapons, which means they have more mobility and paint output than the first team but are the cost of being weaker around ledges and corners against the first team. In our example of two equally skilled teams, they would play the match differently. The first team will play around walls and ledges and focus on pressuring the other team by threatening to get splat, while the second team wants to play an open space where they can take advantage of their superior paint and mobility. They are playing to their win conditions. If either team doesn't play this way against an equally skilled opponent, they will end up losing the game. Now moving past the specific example, things start to get complicated as you factor in other elements, such as players making mistakes, but the important part is to understand your strengths and weaknesses in order to identify what your best possible win condition is. Some of you may be thinking, okay, I know what my win condition is for my team, but how do I actually get the win? That's where your goals and objectives come into play. If your win condition is how to win a game, then your team goals and individual objectives are how to achieve your win condition. Let's do another example. You and your team are playing on the reef, and you know that your win condition is to let the enemy team come to you instead of trying to get deep into their side of the map. In order to do this, you need a goal. Once we're on the reef, then the team's goal is having control of the bridge. Now, as a team of four players, each member is going to have a different objective in order to achieve that goal. Say, a blaster is going to play around the ledges on the enemy side of the bridge. The charger may want to sit directly on th at the top of the bridge and use the range. A shooter, like a Kensa splatter shot, may play around the tree by the enemy's main ramp to paint and potentially flank. Each member is doing a different objective in order to achieve the team goal, and the team goal is decided by the win condition. Confused? That's okay! This style of thinking may not be natural to you, and that's perfectly fine. It's something you can practice and develop over time. But let's recap what all of this means and why you should care. In order to win a game, you need to know what your team's strengths and weaknesses are so you can play to your win condition. Your win condition determines the goals your team needs to achieve, and individually each member has an objective they need to accomplish to reach that goal. Thinking about it in this way will help guide your actions so you can learn how to play better, faster. If it helps to boil all of this down into a single concept, something I do is think in terms of probability. The idea is if you go into the start of a game with a 50% chance of winning, then you should try to play to make it so your odds of winning are as close to 100% as possible. If you make that play you're thinking about making, will the odds of you winning the game go up? What if the play fails? How much of the odds of you winning go down? This concept is a little bit more complex, but it's taking the idea of win conditions, goals, and objectives and combining it into a single number. So to wrap things up, making a team comp involves understanding your own weapon strengths and weaknesses, as well as being able to apply that to your team's weapons, understanding what weapons and specials work well together, and understanding your team's main win condition, as well as the goals and objectives to help you reach that. 
I hope this video helps you guys learn a little bit more about team comps, and a big thanks to Prod for helping me out. You can catch me talking about Splatoon and other Nintendo topics on the Negus' Corner podcast live on Twitch, and on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. You can also follow my Twitter, at DrProdigy. All of Prod's links will be in the description, and thank you all so much for watching.